Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Let me just verify. From Costa Rica. Oh, from China. We got some people around the world today. India. Of course, happy to do this. So we're happy to do this. So we're just going to give it a minute here because uh, it's not quite 11 o'clock uh, my time yet. So we're just giving some time for people to join us and give some time for this to get in here to the uh, stream. So bear with us as we hello. So it looks like we've got good sound, good video. Okay, um, and then let me verify on my other computer. It's hard for me to get to the other computer. I'm just gonna look in on my side and see how the stream's looking as well. Um, sorry, I gotta be able to get to my other computer. It, it needs me to log in now, of course, of course. Okay, let's see what we got here for a stream. Play draft some draft, Daft Punk. <laughs> uh, man, I wish, I wish we could just play any music that we wanted, right? It'd be so much more fun. Uh, then we don't have to worry about all that copyright infringement stuff, but it's completely understandable. I would be, I would have like movies playing in the background probably, and music playing, and everything else like that, right? That's probably how I would be going. So, okay, we seem to be getting good sound. Let's double check the video before we really start diving into this, of course. Uh, Bangladesh, you guys are from all over the place. From Mars. Good one, Chef Curry Beef. I like it. <laughs> Everyone's putting where they're from, and I like from Mars. We got some people from Spain. We got people from India. We got people from Bangladesh. Uh, well, all over the place. Wow, this is great. Fantastic. Great to see so many people uh, coming to the stream. This is kind of a little bonus stream, right? You want to print the cap, Mr. Sanson? Yes. Yes. Oh, we got an India. What up, Big Joe Mena? Thanks for coming, Mr. Sanson from Brazil. Australia. Very. Chris, how late is it there? Are you guys are, are let's see, I don't know the time there. Was it 17 hours? Ukraine, France. I love that there's no, no one from the United States, except for, so far, Joe. <laughs> uh, everyone's from everywhere else. You got Jamaica? I got married in Jamaica. Love it. Russia, no one from the U.S. No one has time in the U.S. for this, right? Um, so, um, yeah, so what we're going to be covering today is, obviously, we've been putting out some videos. Uh, it's 2 a.m. there, wow. Okay, well, this stream's only going to be an hour. That's it, right? Because the only thing we're talking about is this hat. And the reason why we're talking about it is we've been putting up videos uh, throughout these last couple of weeks, obviously since the release of the most recent version, which is 2021.6, okay? So, the hat one, and we're going to maybe look at doing this more, the hat, a lot of people were asking, I need a tutorial, I need a tutorial, how did you do this, how did you do that, how did you do this? So we thought it'd be fun, let's just do it, let's just do it live, let's do a live stream, right, on how we can make this hat. So in essence, I'm going to do everything from beginning to end in this stream and walk you guys through that. And then, of course, this is recorded so you guys will have this to go back and watch again at any point in time that you want to. Okay? So our goal is to kind of remake this hat for you guys. And I'll walk you through what's up, Bin Vichar, through everything um, that I've done. And, of course, I'm wearing our the hat that's a little bit of my inspiration uh, was this hat so you can see uh, got the mesh in the back okay so this is where kind of that why I've, and then I went a little bit my own way on this okay so uh, I'm excited to have you all here with me thank you for joining me this is a bonus stream uh, again I usually stream on Fridays at 11 a.m. I'm doing a little project trying to make a miniature with Miniac so tune in on Friday same same bat channel same bat time okay so um, this is going to be a lot of fun for you guys. Okay, so I'm going to walk you guys through some of this stuff. So let's start with just, I've, we're making anything, right? We got to start with the basics, okay, and where to go. So this is not, since Mr. Sanson's asking, this is not surface noise. There's no surface noise on this right now, none at all, okay? 
Um, actually, I'm using micro polys. So I'm going to walk you guys through all of this and show you guys what I've done to do this. Okay. And I'm going to keep these images up here so that we all just have a frame of reference of what we're trying to kind of recreate again and make. Okay. So here we go. It's now 11 o'clock. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, right when I said, oh, Mr. Sandin, you're on my audio is a little saturated you mean it's too, it's getting too high for everybody else right when i want to start up it never fails for me here how about let me i'll dial back my decimals a little bit is that better because i've got a loud voice anyways as it is and it'll carry All right so you can see the majority of this this ball cap it's made up of 18 subtools. so i'm going to walk you through this we're going to show how we did the logo i'm going to show you how i did the stitching i'm going to show you a lot of people asked about how the meshing I'm going to show you how uh, I made an insert mesh brush for in here as well. And then just the general cap and the bill itself. Okay. So, well, thanks for coming to see me live. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, so now you can, by all means, far away questions. I'm not going to go on a lot of tangents in this stream because we only got an hour. And my tangents tend to take longer. And I want to make sure we get through the entire hat. So I might not be answering as many questions in this stream as I normally do on my Friday streams. But go ahead and throw it up and maybe uh, I can bring it in or we can, depending on our time, we can fill some stuff in at the end as well. All right, let's do this. Let's go. Okay. So for me, the fastest way to kind of create the base mesh was just grabbing this sphere. All right. So I'm just going to grab this sphere 3D shape that we have already inside a ZBrush. Okay. And I'm going to take advantage of the ability to change this topology right now and fast. Uh, so I want to make something kind of low topology. So I'm going to go into my initialized state down here at the bottom. Okay, and then I have two here. Let me make sure my face is not covering that. There you go. Okay, you have these two right here, okay? So I'm going to change these up. I'm going to change these divisions. I'm going to go 12. So I've got 12 spans going around the sphere. And then I'm going to go 11 this way. And there's, there's a reason why I picked these two numbers, especially number 11. Okay, I want to have a center point here within the sphere. So I'm going to come out of perspective so you guys can just see an orthographic. Okay, so this is what I want. Nice and low. Let's go ahead now and let's make that a poly mesh. Okay, now that we have this, I only need the bottom half. I mean, sorry, the top half. I don't need the bottom half. So I'm going to hide that bottom half and I'm going to delete it. Okay, so I'm going to go to my geometry and modify topology. And I'm going to hit delete hidden. Okay, and so now I only have just this, okay? So now I'm going to kind of reform this. This is really spherical, right? And this is kind of why I wanted these images. Obviously, we need something a little more oval-like. I'm going to turn off the floor. We don't need the floor. Oval-like right there, right? So me, I'm a big fan of deformers, especially the deformer, deformer, the deformer, okay? So now I'm going to tell this to be symmetrical. So I'm going to grab on this blue cone right here. And so now the only dots that are available are these. And I'm going to do this, which is control. And I'm clicking and dragging out and then holding the Alt key. So whatever's in the white box is going to actually keep the white dots available. And the other white dots are not available. So in essence, I've masked off the middle dots through here this Okay, so when I pull on this, you can see we start tweaking that a little bit and just giving a little bit of a stretch. Just enough that obviously would fit on a human, right? And then now if I want to go this way, because I stretched it, right? I stretched it. I don't have I don't have this as as well. So I'm going to now say, all right, let's just take these top dots and let's just stretch it up a little bit more. Give it a little bit more volume, right? Because I'm a little bit more like this. And maybe even let's do these, right? And then, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we, maybe not. Maybe not. I might be all right with looking at what we have here. Oh, well, maybe. Nah, let's, let's keep that like the way it is. All right. So then one part is going to obviously be the front and one part's going to be the back. Okay. <clears throat> So this is where this comes in handy. I know which way is the front, right? Especially since I don't have a head in here, okay? Um, and so it's important for me, again, 
I had also a middle line through here. That's why I made the segments that I did where I did the 12 and 11 because I wanted to have a dead center here and then I wanted to have a dead center here. Okay, so what before I do anything, I'm going to switch to Z Modeler and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to insert an edge loop right right through here, right? Maybe something something like that. That's good enough. Okay? And I'm actually going to get rid of these triangles. So these triangles right here, I'm going to get rid of them. I actually don't want them. Um, they're going to be better for me not to have them when I start doing some things down the road. So I'm going to get rid of those as well. So we'll delete hidden on that. Right? And then now I need the front and the back. Okay, So let's go ahead and say I only want now the polygons that are going to be making up, say, the front of the hat. Right, So I select those out. I'm going to split hidden those. So now we've got, I'm going to say rename front. Okay, and they're just so I'm staying rename back. Okay, and so now we have this. Okay, I'm actually going to do another thing here. I'm going to duplicate um, the front. I'm going to rename this front just so I have it. Because there's something else down the road that I'll, I, I'm going to want to do with this. And it's best to just have this as well. Right? Rocking and rolling. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn that one off. Because I only want to focus now on this. Okay, so now we need we need the bill. Right? Easy way to do this is the easiest way for me was using this. So I'm going to switch um, this to... I'm going to do nothing on the face. Okay? All right? So... Uh, well, actually, well, I'll stay with Q-Mesh. We'll do as Q-Mesh. And then on the edge, I'm going to switch to Extrude. Okay? And then I'm going to say in here, I'm going to say Edge and Edge Loop. So I'm going to keep that action there. Right? And then I'm going to do Perpendicular. Okay? There is shortcuts to get to this as well. But I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to temporarily hold the Alt key and then just paint on these faces right here. Okay, so again, I'm holding the Alt key and I'm just painting them white. What that's going to do is when I go now and grab an edge, you'll see it's actually extruding the edges along here, even though I've only got single edge selected. So I just wanted to show this, that you can actually paint what faces you want the brush to interact with and then the edge, because I'm now switching to the edge and hovering over the edge and dragging on it, it's only going to happen to these faces right here. Okay? So, <clears throat> now that I have this, right, we got even, we're making a new polygroups as well right here, right? So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make the bill its own polygroup. So, because what I did, this also changed these. So, I'm just going to quickly reassign the green to those part because I only want this to be a different polygroup and doing that again just so everyone is aware I'm holding the alt key okay clicking on the green letting go of the alt key and switching to the shift so my pen never came off my tablet okay it never came off so now I hold the alt key click and get white and if I let go of the alt key we're going to paint the polygroup that was stored which in that case was the green because I don't want those to be yellow anymore. Okay. What's up, Morph3U5? What's going on, or Morph3US? 3U5? Doing well. Thank you. Hope you're doing well as well. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> now I'm just going to reshape this. Okay. So there's many ways we could do this. We could just do deformers. I'm just going to do old school, you know, grab the move brush and kind of just reshape my bill and started making it look like actually a, a hat right so i'm going to keep this this goes lower this will go lower come a lot lower right through here oh, turned off right just start shaping this up a little bit more right getting a little bit more what i want Something like that. Something like this. Let's bring these a lot more forward. Okay. So this over here, all right, I'm going to change this up, okay, a little bit. Okay. I want to actually have this not be way out here like that, right? So again, I'm going to use, I'm going to use um, 
our Z modeler again. So let me switch to the Z modeler brush, okay? And I'm gonna insert an edge loop first, okay? Because I wanna have a little bit of control here of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put an edge loop, I don't know, right about, right about there, I guess, somewhere in there, okay? And then from this point here, okay, we're gonna switch from here and we're gonna, we're going to stitch, okay? Stitch, okay, endpoints. Okay, actually, I'm gonna bridge two points. I'm gonna go from here to here and create that. And then that way I can now get rid of these faces here, right? And kind of make a triangular shape more of what I would want is something like this. So then when I'm looking from this angle, I can ex pretty much frame that up a lot better. So I can get a little bit more that's something going to look like a ball cap. Right, so I'm just bridged across those vertex and then deleted those faces. Give me something a little bit more, and that's why I put that extra edge loop in. All right, so let's see where we're at. So I'm gonna turn on dynamic subdiv, okay? Which is the same thing as coming over here in dynamic and hitting dynamic, I'm just turning it on, okay? Hello from London. Okay, and right now I'm smoothing it two times. As you can see right here, I'm smoothing twice, okay? And what I can do also is throw some thickness on here if you guys want to see kind of what is this going to start looking like if we threw some thickness on here, right? Something like that, right? Just having some general thickness because a ball cap should, you know, it's got to have some volume in it. This way that when I'm reshaping things, right, I can look at this and see kind of the shape that I'm getting with some actual volume right so you can really see what i'm starting to put together and what i want to, to start looking like a little bit in here okay i'm going to turn off dynamic so you can see really what we're messing with is this right we're messing with this low 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 topology is really i'm gonna smooth these out a little bit more i'm gonna round that out a little bit more okay something like that looks good okay I'm gonna now also, going back to my Z modeler, I'm gonna put a crease um, through the bottom half right here so that when I do this, we get that defining difference, which would be important, right? I want that difference in there. So I'm gonna just reshape a little bit more. This is my me kicking going, oh, I gotta have this look like this. Okay, so now, that we have this i can clearly see we got a good we got a ball cap going here it's starting to happen we're starting to form we're starting to make something happen. we're making art now people there there it's art it's art there okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to tell zbrush i want the thickness okay but i don't want the smoothing to happen right now okay because i kind of want to still keep the ball cap kind of low low polygon right now Okay, it's just going to make things easier down the road. So I'm going to turn dynamic back on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this smoothness. So the only thing I get is this, right? So I'm getting some thickness now to my ball cap. It's still very low, low, low polygon, right? Which is what I'm looking for. I'm just going to reshape some more of this. I can't help myself. I got to really stop because I'm just going to keep reshaping all night. Yeah, and the, man, that NFT stuff is just blowing up, eh? I wish it could be an NFT. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to now tell ZBrush is apply the dynamic sub, right? So I'm going to hit apply, and what that's done is actually giving me the topology now that I want. And the reason why I didn't want to have any smoothing on is, here, let's solo this out, and let's just look at this. I want to now start using this to start doing some more creasing, Okay. So one quick way would be, because I'm getting polygroups, is I'm gonna increase by polygroup. And so now I'm gonna increasing all around where there's a polygroup difference. And so now if I turn on dynamic, right? And we don't want any thickness this time. And let's now put some smoothing in. You can see I got a little bit more what I'm looking for, okay? Because I want this corner right here to stay a lot more sharp. And that topology didn't exist. Mike at BGSU, what's up? How's Ohio? 
You're at VGSC. Wow, that that's my that's where I went to college. For those that don't know, so Mike's Mike's going to school there. It sounds like, or or you're an instructor, maybe. Okay, so I'm also going to put a crease up here. I want to put a crease there, right? So this is kind of where I wanted to go, right? And again, I didn't want to have this smoothing on when I went and converted because of this. I wanted to put kind of more creasing without having all that topology because I'm going to use this topology down the road here in a little bit, okay? So now that we're seeing this smooth, the other thing that I like to do, especially since I like to use creasing, so when my dynamic is on, I like to put my smooth dividing at four, and I like to drop my crease level to something like two, and see, that'll just give me the right nice of softness happening through there, and then right there, and then again here at the top, and then also along the bill. You see, I'm getting a little bit of a nice here. I'll zoom in closer. I'm getting a little bit of a, a little beveling right there, right? So that's what that crease level is helping me with. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got, we're starting to make a ball cap. I'm going to duplicate this too, just because I wanna have another one to have just for us to mess around with and have as well. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do now is start placing things for my stitching. Okay, that's what's gonna be coming my next important item to do. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna need more topology. All right, so <clears throat> looking at this, I would say probably, I would say maybe level three, okay? So what I'm going to tell ZBrush to do is I want to now create that topology. So I'm sending a smooth to level three. I'm going to hit apply. And what that did is actually created the topology, right? So now I've got subdivision levels, okay? So there's level one, level two, level three is probably, Probably not level four actually we'll go we'll stick with level four so now that I got level four here I'm actually gonna delete the lower because the only thing I care about right now is this yellow bill right here this is the only thing that I'm really concerned myself with okay so I'm gonna select this yellow part with a poly grouping holding down control shift and clicking on that then I'm gonna split a -roo. so now this is why again this is why I made a copy because I knew I was gonna cut this hat up because there's certain things now that I'm going to want to do here. All right, so now I want something for my, I want some stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna go from, let's go, I think this will look good. Uh, let's go here, so we're gonna switch to Q mesh. Okay, and again, using the poly grouping, I'm gonna go all the way out to here, and I'm just gonna use the existing topology, right? This is why, I wanted to apply my dynamic subdivisions and actually delete the higher because I want to use this topology to help drive my stitching. Okay. Right. And then now I'm just going to go different poly groups. So I'm just, again, holding the alt key. Okay. And then starting to drag white. If I let go of the alt key, it gives me the poly group that's stored. I want to have alternating poly groups here. So you can tap the alt key. Okay. And then that will give you a different poly group. So let's make a couple, let's make a rain, beautiful rainbow, as my daughter says. Oops, uh, let's go here, let's, yeah, right? So I just wanna have some alternating poly groups here. Let's go one more, I guess. We'll go one more, why not? Okay, so something like that. There, yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's what I like, okay? Okay. <clears throat> So here we go. So now I want the stitching, okay? I'm gonna want it to kind of round out through here. Okay, you guys are gonna see where I'm going with this. So I'm gonna now go back to, again, I'm gonna go to this point and I'm gonna use my bridging again. Okay, and I'm just gonna go from here to here, here to here, and now I want that to be blue, and now I want that to be purple, here to here. Okay, and now I want that color there. Then I want from here to here, okay? And then now I want that reddish tone. Then I'm gonna go from there to there, okay? And then this needs to be there. So you can see it's just a same process, right? It's not anything exciting. But what I've done is I made topology that's actually turning right here, right? 
Okay, and that's that's really what I'm looking for is having that topology that turns through there. Now, something else that I did on the hat that you guys saw is I decided, I don't think this is 100% necessary, but I decided to delete um, these faces through here as well, right? So I actually did this as well in my bridging. This was just, I think this is just something I wanted to have a little bit better topology through here. Okay, so I'm bridging between those points. Okay, because I want to turn these, right, into a quad, right? So now I can use something like bridge. You could use extrude, either one. I'm old school. I like to use my bridge. So now I'm just deleting a face, bridging, and copying polygroups. It's just, I, I'm, I don't know, I, I, I tend, if I can, right, stay, stay as much away from triangles as I can, okay? It's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, I don't think this is this step is actually necessary, okay? But you'll get the idea of what I'm doing here, right? And then again, I'm just copying, once again, polygroups. So I'm highlighting the faces so they're deleted, bridging across, making sure those polygroups all match up because I want those polygroups to stay consistent, okay? And there's gonna be a reason for that for the next step that we're going to do. Oops, let me bridge, bridge, and then there. Okay, so now that we have topology that looks like that. Okay, so when I look at this smooth, this is what we're going to get, okay? <clears throat> Again, I've turned on dynamic subdiv, which I'm just hitting shift D and D to kind of do that, right? Okay, so let's turn on dynamic. I don't think I need as many. I think I only need maybe one we'll go with. I'm gonna apply that and give me something even that looks like this. Okay, maybe maybe we'll go one more subdivision, up one more. I guess we'll do that. Yeah, we'll go there. All right, now, one thing that you guys can do since I got a little bit more topology, I can also smooth this out a little bit. I can either do it by hand with a smoothing brush, so I can smooth out this instead of just smoothing like this. I can actually tell ZBrush in the brush palette our smooth modifiers. I can say here with my weighting, I'm gonna go all the way to nine intersecting and then I can kind of see it's just smooth this is kind of why I, I made those quads and why I did I just I want to have a little bit more roundness in there okay and then now for me this is all I'm really concerned about is this right here this part now it's it it's a it is a rainbow but daddy would be so proud of me all right and now I'm gonna grab I saw this a lot of people were asking where I got the stitch brush. It's actually in ZBrush. It's been shipped with ZBrush for I don't even know how many years now, maybe eight years. So I'm going to open up Lightbox with the comma, 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 the comma key. All right. And then I'm going to go in here into the brush menu. Then I'm going to go in here to this folder right here, beta tester uh, brush. There's a bunch more. There's there's barbed wire in here. There's other stitching. There's a bunch of other things in here. I don't know if you guys knew that this existed, but it does. And then there you go. You know I had to. You know I had to bring some 80s involved in this, right? So right here, here's the stitch brush that I want. This one right here. So I'm gonna just double click that. And now that we have it, and what this is brush is doing is it's along a curve. Okay. And then there's my stitches. Now, the other thing that became important to me is where those stitches are sitting in on the surface. Do I want them sitting right there like that? Or do I want them to sit a little bit more inside the surface? So to do that, I'm gonna go to my brush palette here, and then there's a depth right here. So if I knock this down a little bit, let's just even put it at zero, you'll see, see the stitches are now penetrating more of the hat, right? So it'll look more like they're actually in the hat a little bit more. So I'm gonna go with that. So now that we back to our rainbow, Right? And again, we're trying to now do the white stitching right here is what we're working on. I'm going to come up here. I got to, hold on, let me move my, it's in the way. Okay, I'm going to come here to my stroke. I'm going to go to my curve functions here. I'm going to turn on magnifier so you guys can see. Okay, I'm going to go to polygroups and I'm going to hit frame mesh. And you can see this is why I took the time to do what I did. I got a bunch of curves wherever the rainbow is, right? See that rainbow? That's where that curve is. So now if I just tap, I get stitches. 
right? And then now it's how big of a stitching do you want, right? So to change that, I just change my draw size when it's red. Maybe I want to go a little bit bigger and I tap and then I'll get bigger stitches, go a little bit bigger, tap, right? Every time you tap, you see you get bigger stitches. Okay, I think that's probably a good size. So I'm at 20 brush size of 25 for this particular hat right now. And then I can tap and then now I've got nothing here but those stitches, okay? And I like to keep myself organized as much as I can. So I'm gonna split these off. Since I know what it's doing, the stitches are right now the only thing available to edit and everything else is masked off, okay? So now I'm just gonna hit split on masked points and then let, here's my stitches. I'm gonna name, rename these stitches, okay? And someone's asking why did they didn't go all the way to the end, right? It's a great question. I want to take the minute here to answer that. So for those, the default is like this, okay? So if you hit frame mesh, so you're going to get curve also all the way around the ends as well, okay? Because I told her to look at the border. I told her to look, actually, we're going to use the border too. I told her to look at the poly groups, and I told her to look at crease edging. So what I did is I turned off this and then only showed the rainbow poly groups, right? So there's a border here, but I told this button to ignore the border by only having that option where it says polygroups turned on. So that's why, okay, it doesn't do that, right? That's why it doesn't go all the way to the end, okay? Um, Sina, you got to leave the question to the end. That's a big tangent, and I got to make sure I get through the whole hat. So you're going to have to please stay to the end, and I'll answer your question about the the spot the snapshot okay so that's why that's happening and i'm taking advantage of that right so now that i have some stitches for my hat right so then that's for the that's for the bill right so we got our bill taken care of and now we need to take care of the top part in here right so this if you look right this is what i have from here so i don't really need this anymore i could keep this if I wanted to uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and delete it just I don't need it anymore okay and now this one I want to use now this to create some stitches and some other things for the top front part of the hat okay so I'm only looking at the green portion now all right and let's go ahead and let's let's make a nice little accent piece around here so this little orange rim part here that I put in my hat right through here right through this area so here if we we make this a little bit bigger here we go right so this orange part right through here let's do that part next okay so let me just size this back down I don't need it to be massive and we'll put it right there so I'm using spotlight to give me these those floating images that's what I'm doing Okay, so this is the only one I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and split that off because I only want this part of the hat. I'm gonna switch to a different brush now. I'm gonna switch to my curved tube right here. Tubular dude. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna do the same thing now we just did. Okay, so I'm gonna click on my stroke, right? I'm gonna come over here in this frame mesh. Again, I'm going to use this, but I'm going to use it now just for the border. So this is really answering the question. So now when I hit frame mesh, you can see I only get a curve around the border now, right? And so when I tap, I get that now going around the border, right? So I got that part now going around. Perfect. That's what I want, right? I'm looking for that little rim right through there, right? Have all going across the brow. Maybe, you know, that's going to just give it a little bit more weight to the hat, I'd say, or a little more strength. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, split those. Uh, we'll call this uh, rim. Uh, we'll just call it a rim right now. Right? And then now we're back to this one. And now I want to use this one to give me some stitches. Okay? Because I want to have some stitching come through here and be used. Okay? So I'm going to tap on the green portion, which will delete the curve that's already there. So you guys can see there's a curve still there. Right, because we can reuse this curve, okay? So now I'm going to just tap and then it'll delete the curve. There, there's, of course, I can come here into the stroke palette as well, 
okay and I can go in here to curve functions and then there's a delete button right there okay so you see there's a delete button right there all right now what I want to do now is let's have some stitches so this topology is kind of got moved in essence it's rounded right and I've stretched it a little bit for the ball cap so I want to have some stitching huh okay this one this looks good along here right through here right so <clears throat> I'm gonna switch to Z modeler and I'm gonna say let's go polygroup poly loop and let's make a new polygroup there so now I've got a polygroup coming around there so let's go ahead and grab my stitch brush once again okay I know my brush size needs to be at 25 to stay consistent with the other stitches that are on my around the, the, the brim of the hat right so now that I have that go back to the handy dandy look how much we're using this it's just crazy how much we can use this there we go and now I've got stitches going along the bottom right let's turn on solo mode make sure that that's not going to be missing okay that looks good I'm in a good spot I don't mind that at all here and I can even we can even uh, tweak these a little bit because it's a curve so I'm going to make them go down on each side a little bit. There we go. We'll bring the front up just a bit. Now, it shouldn't be too perfect, actually, right? Even though it should be pretty perfect. But if you look at even the hat I'm wearing, I can look at the stitching. And there's spots where it could have a little bit of waviness, okay? So, again, now looking at this, we've got these stitches happening like this. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and unmask points, okay? So I've got the front stitches, and now I've got the stitches going around the hat. I'm gonna move those up, and let's just let's just put them together. Why? Do, I'm gonna merge down now, and then now there's those stitches, so they're all one. Okay. So I got all of those. Let's go back to this piece again. I'm gonna delete that curve. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and repolygroup, just so we have one polygroup again, and I want to put some stitches down here. Okay. So I'm gonna now switch to a different brush. I'm gonna do a, sli a slicing curve, and I'm gonna do something more. I want them to kinda be more on a straight angle, more like that. So then that creates a polygroup for me. So once again, okay, you guys know this routine now. Frame it, tap it, there's our stitches, split it. I feel like I'm playing the game, bop it now. Pop it, twist it. For those that know the game, that's what I feel like I'm just playing right now. It's it's rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? And there's all my stitching, okay? So now we turn this off. This is what we're starting to make through here, okay? Pretty simple, right? I'm not getting crazy in here, okay? So now we've got we've got our hat, right? We've got the front of our hat, okay? And then you also have this one. We don't need this one. We can delete this one just to keep myself clean. Okay, we have that front that's a low polygon. We got our back. We really don't need this one anymore. I'll just leave it just so we have it, okay? So we got the front, and now what I wanna do is put a logo on this, right? I need a logo on the front of the bill. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a logo now. So this is how easy it is. There are multiple ways to do this in ZBrush, in all honesty. There is now five different ways you could probably make a logo. What's going on, Lexter Lopez? How are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to grab a plane. It's just a plane that ships with ZBrush. It's not anything crazy. I'm going to make that a poly mesh. Let's divide this up to about a million. Okay, so I'm just control D, control D, control D. When I do that, I feel the robot. Come on, Mr. Robotic, Roboto. Okay, so <clears throat> now that I have this divided up, again, I'm sitting at level six. It's one million. It's like one million fifty thousand. Right? Bop it. Stitch it, Brian. I like it. We could probably have some kind of video that does this for sure, right? Okay, and now that I got this, I've got some topology there. What I'm going to do now is go, this actual plane's already got UV set on it. So I'm going to take advantage of the UV. Okay? So I'm going to grab this, okay? And I'm going to import an image. And what I'm going to import is a logo. Let me grab that. It's on my other... Let me get to it. It's on my other monitor right now. Give me a second. I'm going to bring in the ZBrush logo. 
okay woo there we go right so it's just pure black pure white image there's a reason why i'm doing this technique okay so for comics legends bring up something too that comes in handy is the mesh extract brush i wouldn't use it for this because it's going to lose my text too much that's why i wouldn't use that actual technique comics legend because the text is going to get too rounded on me all right so now that i have this i'm going to now go to my masking i'm going to go into mask by color and i'm going to say mask by intensity let me make sure okay there we go so now that i have that mask by intensity i'm just pressing that button right there Okay, and now we're coming, gonna come back to the texture map and you see right here, there's a texture on and off. I'm just gonna turn that off and you can see what has happened here is the mask, right? has been applied based upon a painting. So the pure black, in essence, 100% pure black is the mask in white, pure 100% white is ignored, okay? It's ignored, okay? And I don't want the little, register trademark i don't need that so i'm going to unmask that okay so now we've got this mask i'm going to actually probably blur it once and then i'm going to sharpen it again and then maybe blur one more time just one more time something like this okay so now i've got this mask on this and what i'm going to tell zbrush to do okay is let's get rid of our subdivision levels so we don't have any and let's take that mask and make a new polygroup from it not only make a new poly group, okay, but slice right along the logo, right? So where that mask is, I in essence now have that, right? Where that mask lived is where this is happening now, okay? So again, let me let me go work backwards on this so you guys can let me start where we were at, okay? So again, I applied an image as a mask, right? This has got subdivision levels right now. The feature I want to use can't have subdivision levels. How are you doing, Mr. Spicer? Thank you for coming in. You're too kind. All right, so I'm going to delete lower. Okay, so then I get rid of it. And then what I'm going to tell ZBrush to do is I want you to look at the mask. I want you to make a new polygroup. But not only do I want to make a new polygroup, so I don't want to just use Control W. I want to actually, I also at the same time, I want a slicing to happen as if I had the slice brush in my hand and going through it. Okay, so this is going to allow me to do this, right? It's going to give me a new poly group with the slicing. So again, app portions bringing up snapshot camera, which I'm assuming you're, you're referring to the spotlight. Again, that could work, but I also like this way for me because it's just something in particular I want to do. And this was just the workflow that I felt better. That's what I'm saying. There's more than one way to do this inside of ZBrush, okay? So now that I have this, okay, how am I getting to this point is I'm holding down a shortcut, but really what I'm pressing is right here in edge loop, I'm pressing this. I'm pressing this edge loop mass border, which the shortcut is control shift E. So I just know what the shortcut is, okay? So I just use the shortcut, right? And you can see my polygroups changed. <laughs> Brad, nice nickname, I like it. Okay, and then now I only need this poly this one i only need the logo now so i'm gonna i'm gonna delete those okay and then now i want to get lower polygon this is 231,000. so we're going to use our handy dandy z remesher i'm just you know in fact here i'm going to give it a little bit more i'm going to give it 10,000 polygons and then just hit z remesh okay now I'll sit back and let the remesher do its work so again recapping here i'm just bringing an image in right and the pure black is going to be mask pure white snow mask guys now but don't forget you can use any color now inside a zbrush it doesn't even have to be black and white anymore we have the masking ability to mask by color now in zbrush right so it doesn't matter what it is you're all good right so there we go we've got we've got our logo we're off and running now and now it's only ten thousand polygons okay so ten thousand two hundred fifteen to be exact and let's go ahead now switch to our z modeler brush and let's give this some thickness now okay so uh i'm gonna go ahead and say let's q mesh all polygons because i want to pull them out 
So I'm going to click on that and say, let's pull those out and give it some, let's give it some good thickness. Okay, in there. All right, I like that. So now I've got a polygroup in the back, polygroup in the front, polygroup in the middle, business in the front, party in the back, people. John, I wouldn't panel loop it because it's going to smooth it too much. Wouldn't work. It's going to smooth my text way too much. Okay. So <clears throat> now that I have this, I'm going to look from the side here, right? And I'm going to now say, let's go to the gizmo. I'm going to center that. Okay. Can't have symmetry on. And I'm going to click the gear. And I said it already. I love my, de I love me some deformers. Okay. I'm going to use slice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to symmetrically slice this. So this blue cone right here, I'm going to turn it all the way up. So I'm going to pull it all the way to the right because that's my Z axis, right? And then this blue dot, I'm just going to now start moving it towards the Z and see I get two edge loops. Like how many times do you guys want to do this where you just want to get certain edge loops from a certain distance? I use this a lot. I'm a big fan of this because maybe I want a certain, right, little distance. And, and it doesn't just stop there. You're going to be able to do other things with this as well, right? It's got inflating ability too if I want to inflate, okay? which then I can also add creasing and increasing. I don't, I don't want any inflation, so I'm gonna just keep it just like this. So there you go, the slicing gave me this, okay? I'm gonna look at just this polygroup, okay? Which is now that this is the middle portion, but now I've got some edge loops in there. I'm gonna shrink my selection, which is Control Shift S. Control Shift S, again. The way you find that is here, let me show you in the UI so you're aware of that. In here is where all the visibility is where you can grow and shrink. So you can see right here, there's the shrink, control, shift, S, as in Superman. Ba -ba -da Superman, right? And then you got to grow all, grow out a ring. You got to grow, which is control, shift, X. I can't tell you how many times I use this. Okay, and then now I'm going to tell ZBrush, again, going back to this geometry edge loop menu, I'm going to use this edge loop right here. Let's do a crisp. Okay, here, I'm going to just put this on an angle. Here, let me just turn on double so you guys can really see this. And put it on an angle. So let me just look at my screen to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to turn on crisp here. And I'm going to say I want to I push out. Okay, so I'm going to just turn this displacement up and hit edge loop. And that's creating an edge loop. So what you're seeing is that now. See, I want to put a little, a little lip in the logo. So I'm just adding this. Again, this is not something we have to do. I'm just wanting to do it. Yeah, see, I like that. That looks good. I'm happy with that. There. I'm happy with that. We're good to go. Now what? Now we need to put this on the hat. Again, there's more than one way to do this. 100%. There's so many ways that we can go about doing this, people. Okay? But the way I chose to do it is this. I'm going to say B for brush. Uh, hold on. And then let me... In fact, I'm going to go up in here since you guys probably don't see it. So... In the create menu, all right, I'm going to say I want to turn this into an insert mesh brush. So I want the logo to look straight at the camera, okay? I want to boom, just like my hand starting to work, stream close up on the hand, right? And now what I want to do is insert, right? I want to create an insert mesh brush, right? So I'm just going to brush, create, create, insert mesh brush. And it's asking me, hey, what you doing, man? What's going on? Do you want me to add it to the existing brush? Or do you want me to make a new? I'm gonna make a new. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a new. Okay, I'm gonna make a new. And now what we have here is this. We've got our logo that I can draw out. So let's go back, right, to our hat. We got the hat here, right? <clears throat> so this is pretty much the front of the hat. And then this is like that piece of the hat that we had, right? I'm gonna use this to my benefit, right? So of course we can now just I can turn on symmetry. So I can see where the center of the hat's going to be. So I'm hitting X. Okay. Boom. Right. And then turning X off. And when I draw this out, I get that. Right. But it's not taking the form of the hat. Okay. So what I want to do is in the brush palette, somebody already, somebody beat me to it. In the modifiers here. Let me make sure you guys can see that. Right here, the projection strength. This is, this is people, right. This people is a Lisa needs braces moment, right. For sure. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this projection all the way up to 100. Okay. And then now when I draw this out, 
we get a logo that's conforming to the hat. Okay, and I want that logo to sit inside just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go into, again, the brush. I'm going to go to the depth. Then I'm going to say, okay, let's have a depth of zero. Okay, and then now again, symmetry, X, boom, let them meet in the middle. So let's make it one. They come together. They're married, right? And then I'm turning X off, so that way I'm just getting only that. And then there you go. We've got a logo. It's sitting somewhat in the surface. I'm good to go now. Let's go ahead and split this off again. And now let's rename this, because again, people, you really should be like that. I would recommend this. Like as I'm sure all of you, as you're working, you're seeing your, your sub tools could start getting a little crazy. So it's best to really name things so you're not, I don't know what this is. Okay. All right. Dental plan, dental plan. Okay. Uh, Ibram, what is your what are your questions? Put them there, and I'll I'll look at them as I go on. They could be called dental plan moments. You're right. Okay. So there we go. We've got we're getting more of the front of the hat done. Something else now I also want to do is this part of the hat up here. Let's do something else also with this. Okay. So I'm gonna say there's let's go back to let's go back to our Q meshing. So we're gonna select our Z modeler, hold the space bar. I'm gonna say Q mesh polygroup all. Okay. And then now what I'm gonna do is this, but instead I wanna kind of rip it off the surface. Okay, so it's actually no longer attached. So I'm using the existing topology. You guys see how many times I'm using the existing topology? Right? That's why my base mesh was so important. So I'm clicking this, and then I'm holding the control key. So this comes kind of off the surface, and it's automatically going to make a new polygroup. Okay, and what I want now is just only this portion here. Okay? So I'm going to split this off. Split hidden. Okay, and let's call, let's rename this under rim. Okay, and then now what I'm going to do is I want to tell ZBrush, all right then, let's go ahead and QMesh polygroup all. Let's do that. I'm going to make a new polygroups on the fly like that. Let's just look at this and let's also make it a little bit thicker, something like that. And I definitely want, just like on the top, I'm going to crease these edges here. I'm going to crease that edge right there and same thing on the other side, right? So when I do this, right, it's going to give me that, right? So now let's put our hat in dynamic. So we have something like that, all right? I'm going to now say this needs some softness, needs some love. If you're doing anything, nothing should be completely hard surface, hard surface, okay? Make believe TV, it's up to you. We'll make it a snapback if you want when we get to that point. We're going to head to the back here in a second. So again, this is just too harsh. So I got dynamic subdivs at four, but I need my crease level drop down to two. So it just softens up a little bit in here, right? And then, okay, this also needs to be set to level two, right? And then this is, in essence, so I can assign different colors and things like that, right? I can change the sizing a little bit, move it up a little bit, just so there's another additional little rim portion in here. So I can make that be a different color than the top. That's kind of why I did that, right? If you look in the render, see there's a little bit of orange inside, right? So here, let me let me make these bigger again so you guys can see it. Let's go with this one, whoops. Uh, but, right, so you can see that orange rim right here and that orange right in there, that's what I'm doing right here right now. Okay. That's, I just kind of want to add that element into the hat, right? That's just what I was going for. Right. So now let's move to the back. A lot of people were asking about how the heck I did the back portion. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now let's do this. I want to make something that's repeating along the back. Okay, again, there's more, more than one way to do this in all honesty, all right? I'm going to do this in a particular way. I want to create a pattern because I'm going to want topology, okay, at the end of this. Because maybe I need to get it out. 
And maybe there's something else I want to do with that topology, i.e. maybe doing some other things with that, all right? So <clears throat> let's go ahead and now select the back. I'm going to duplicate this just so I have another one of these, okay? And let's say, let's rename this one. I'm going to call this one the back mesh. Oops. Just so I know which one's just the back and which one's actually the mesh. So we don't need the back one on now. All right. And I'm going to want to make this a mesh. So this is all I did. I'm going to grab again our handy dandy plane. Okay. I'm actually going to tell ZBrush to make the plane have absolutely no spans through the parts that I, I, I don't want any spans through there. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> I've got this. I'm going to make that a poly mesh. Okay. So now we just got this one singular plane. I'm going to go ahead now. Let's make a pattern. So I'm going to use a ray mesh. Ray mesh is one of the best things for patterns. I'm going to turn that on. Okay. I want repeating four of them. Let me make sure you guys can see. Okay. Good. So I got, I'm turning on my array mesh and then changing my repeat pattern to four. Okay. Then I'm going to tell ZBrush, let's go to rotate. And I'm going to rotate along the Z 360 degrees. Okay. When voila, nothing happens. Okay. Nothing's happening because they're, this is a perfect square, right? And there's four of them and rotating them, they're all just perfect squares. Okay. So what I'm going to do next now is I'm going to turn on this lock position. So I'm going to lock the position down and I'm going to switch to my gizmo and start doing this and you'll see they they pull apart right so now i'm going to do this and maybe make a pattern you know uh, i don't know we'll go like there that's good enough okay so now i've got four faces sitting right there okay which is important for me okay and then now all i got to do is say let's make this a mesh so I'm going to come down here to make mesh. Let's say, hold on. My face is covering that for you guys. See so this make mesh, click it. And now we've got real topology. So all there's no longer instancing. They're all there for us. Okay. And then now I'm going to, again, switch back to my bridging in Z Modeler. And I'm just going to bridge across so that I can create this pattern. And I'll make it a new polygroup like this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and crease all so that everything's creased. Okay. So now that I have this, okay, this is now a, a, a little pattern. Okay. To a, where did I click for what part? What part did you get lost in? I forget. Uh, I don't know where your question, array mesh. What about it? Where did I click? So I clicked here in array mesh, right? So here, let me go backwards. Okay. So I've got array mesh. I've turned on lock position. I'm repeating four times. Okay. And then I'm rotating 360 degrees along the Z. That's it. That's all I'm doing with array mesh. And then I moved with the gizmo away and they, they became all four corners in essence, right? And then to make it real topology, I'm clicking on this make mesh button. And then now it converts the instancing into real topology. Now I'm just bridging with Z modeler so it can be a, a completed piece. In essence, the pattern that I want, right? The, this is what I want for the pattern, okay? Now that's my pattern. Watch, let's go back now because there's other things they're going to be able to do. Well, that's the finished hat. Let's go back to this now, okay? So now that I have this, I want to tell ZBrush to dynamically look at this. Right, so when I turn dynamic on, we're getting the smooth version of this hat. Okay, number one, you see how it's moving so much? I'm gonna stop some of that movement by using creasing. So I'm just gonna crease the border. Okay, so now the border is creased up. Okay, so you see there's not so much movement now. It's not, see it's not pulling away as much. So I'm just hitting that crease button with a 45, hold, hold on. Hitting that crease button right here. Right with a 45 degree angle, and I'm getting creased all along the edging. Right, and now all I'm going to tell ZBrush to do is let's not actually do any smoothing, okay? Which really doesn't matter because when I go now to use micro poly, 
It's just going to have it. So now I'm going to go ahead and say turn micro poly on. Okay, this allows me to grab things from what we've already pre-made for you guys. But I made something. So how the heck do I get what I made and apply to that, right? Because so if I grab this, you see it's now applied to the hat. So now I've got this twill applied to the hat. That's not what I want. I want I want the design that I made. Okay? So you're going to control tap on this. And then now I can see there's my shape and I swap it out. Okay? And you see what happens here? Do you see how big like this is craziness going on? There's a reason for this. The shape that I've added, it's really big. Like shape-wise, it's massive. So if you're going to make micro polys, okay? Uh, this shape actually needs to be changed at it just one thing because if you look this piece right it's really big in the grand scheme of things I turn on the floor look how big it is it's ginormous right so I need this to be smaller okay <clears throat> sorry I just need some water so I'll, to do this the easiest thing that you guys are gonna do this I'm gonna go to deformation I'm gonna hit unify so this unifies it down, creates it to be just one size. It's just a simple, simple thing. Now we're going back to this. And again, I'm going to go back into my geometry, hold the control key, tap on the icon, load this up, and then there we go. Okay. Now, something else to think about this for people. I can also, let's go back to this. Okay. Let's clone this. Let's make another version of this with a ray mesh. Okay, I'm going to turn the ray mesh back on here. And I'm going to say, let's repeat two. Okay. So I'm going to repeat two across here. And then I'm going to append, I'm going to append or insert a new one. And then I'm going to move and say, make this a quadrant of four. Something like that, right? And then now I'll make this into a mesh. So now there's four. The reason why I want to highlight this is this one's just one, right? So when we go back to our hat, you can see what we're getting there. Okay, if I now hold control and tap on the other one, you can see the pattern's a little different. Again, I didn't unify this, so we need to unify this once again. I'm going to unify that back. Okay, hold control, tap. We get this. So you can see I'm already getting that mesh pattern. You don't have to do this, but I need you guys to understand that there is something we can do. So I prefer using this, okay, where it's just the one. Okay, the reason being, people, is right now I'm not telling this mesh to be divided up at all. So what's happening here is every single polygon is getting this pattern. And so all I got to do is tell you, well, give me more polygons. So instead of doing the quad one, right, where there's four, right, again, already like this, see, it's looking more probably what I would want in this sense, okay? This one is going to open up more possibilities for me, okay? So now all I need to do is add more divisions here, and you can see I start getting a mesh, okay? And then now there is a meshed hat. It's that simple, okay? And you can see this is allowing me to go to three subdivision levels, and every time it divides, another one of those is being copied. And then the beauty about micropoly is when we convert this to topology, we automatically weld everything for you as well. Okay, so welding is going to happen. That's why there's a weld button right here. Okay, so what I mean is now we're sitting at subdivision level, right, three. If I now hold down control and click and I tap on the four one, you see the, that gets, see, it's a smaller mesh. And it's only because there's just four within the one shape and compared to the two. So I can get to the same thing, right, with the singular pattern. And all I need to do is just up. It's, see, if there's the same thing. It, it just opens up more freedom. If, if you guys can make micro polys where you've got more flexibility, it's probably for the better. Okay, in all honesty. All right, so something else I want to do here. This should also have some other things going along along the bottom. So I'm going to turn this off. Right, and again, once again, I'm going to do this. Paint just those bottom, okay? And I'm going to come through here and say extrude. And again, I got perpendicular going, okay? And so I'm just going to click on this and extrude inward like that, okay? And then now these faces here, 
Let's paint these temporarily. I actually don't need to do the painting. Let's, let's actually do this one without the painting. So I can pull out here a single edge, right? Or I can switch it to an edge loop. So I, I can tap the Alt key and say what I want. So there. Okay. And I'm going to probably want to have, let's say, some creasing now through there. I don't want any creasing there, there. I need this to round in the back, right? It would just make sense for that to round along the back. And then now when I turn on you know, some dynamics, I'm getting a little bit of this. So see how this is still turning in here, right? What would have been better for me to do, going back to this, is just taking this shape and let's just say, again, extrude, but poly loop instead. And then now what this is going to do is create a loop Right, going all the way around, and then I'll go again, poly loop in. Right? So that way when I go to divide, right, I've got some more topology here to work with right in here in this corner, right? So these edges, right, you're gonna to want to make sure these are creased all through here, right? So that when you're dividing, right, you got the uh, I don't I definitely don't want those creased. I uh don't want that creased, I don't want that creased. I want that crease though. Okay, and I don't want those creases in there. So we'll just do so it's faster. Don't want any of those creased parts in there, right? So give me something like this. Just gives me some volume in here, right? That's all I want. It's some nice volume in here. Okay, I don't want that creased there. Perfect. Don't want that creased either. Okay. There. And then now what's happening is you see it's not going to pull away from the front of the hat so much. And then I can reposition this now, make this be maybe more in there, and then now turn on my micro polys. Right? And then that way it, it's going in the hat and then it's also doing what the hat really does. The micro polys are turning around in the corner and coming through to the other side as well. Right? So this is what I start to get. There's my mesh. Okay, and I've turned off my logo. Okay, so there's how I did the back of the mesh, just using micro polys, and then I just made my own version. Okay. <clears throat> how did I create the angles in the back part? That's what we're gonna get to next now. Okay, so we got a little bit more time, right? So I wanna create some kind of nice repeating part in the hat, because obviously this shouldn't be just only a mesh. Right, there should be some other items there. So let's go ahead and let's grab a cube. I'm gonna grab one from here. Because I'm gonna go a little bit faster and explain less just because we're running out of time. Right, and then I'm gonna kind of just make a quick little shape in here. Let's now add some inserting, some edge loops. Let's go all the way up into there. Let's do something like that. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And Q mesh this. And let's actually, I'm going to need another edge. Whoops. Let's put some, actually another edge right in here. And then now pull this out. Give me something like that. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to control W that, make a new poly group. I'm going to now insert so I get this. And then now I'm going to do make that a new poly group. And then make that a new poly group, right? So I got a purple, red, and green. We're going to turn the floor off. So I got these a poly groups, okay? Um, what's going to be important for me now is looking at it smoothed, okay? So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and crease. So I'm going to crease that edge, crease that edge. Let's crease that edge, that edge. And why not? Let's crease those edges there and those edges there and those, whoops, and those edges there. So really every edge, but those two, I'm going to crease, right? And again, I'm looking at it smooth and I want to see a crease level of two. All right. That's, that's what I'm looking for. That looks nice. Okay, so if you hold the Alt key and click on a crease, you can remove creasing. That's it. So if you have 
Creasing selecting, just hold the Alt key and, it un and then tap on the edge and it'll uncrease. Chase. Okay. So now I'm going to use something else here. I'm going to go back to a brush we've already used, right, which is this stitching brush. Okay, I'm just going to get out, mm, I don't want that many. Let's go a lot bigger. Okay, and I've got it sitting a little bit inside. Let's put it back so it's sitting on the surface again. Okay, and then I want to use, in essence, this brush, right, to give me some stitches, right? So you see, I want, I want some stitches, okay? So let's go a lot bigger, okay? Let's go about that big. Uh, that looks good, okay? And let's go ahead and split those off. Split on mass points. Okay, and then I'm going to only show these two. I only really want those two stitches. Okay, and I'm gonna angle them a little bit more. I mean like that, okay. <clears throat> then I'm gonna say, let's pick this up, brush, create, create an insert mesh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and say new this time. In fact, you know what, I also, I don't want the back, so let's, Hide the back part. We don't want those. Might help if I turn symmetry off. Hold on. Let me make my color again. Let me turn some there. And I don't want. And I don't want those. I just want these. These are the only two I want. So let's go ahead and create an insert mesh brush. I'll go ahead and append it this time. So we've got two of them. Okay, this one's just drawing out like that, right? <clears throat> What I'm going to do now is go to create in the brush palette. I'm going to turn it into a nano, 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 nano. Come back to this in here. Okay. We don't need this stroke anymore. And what I want to do is create some stitching through here. So let's go ahead and do a mirror and weld <clears throat> just so I have a middle port here. Right. Uh, we're going to need to go mirror and weld along. Not along that, along that Z. I mean the Y. I keep clicking on my colors. And let's go ahead and let's insert a single edge loop. And I'm along the Y right now. Let's do an edge loop right there. Okay. And then now I'm gonna say here, here, and here. I want these stitches. Okay, and now what this is, is actual nano. Okay, and so I can size this up to the size that I want. Okay, something like that. And you can see the other side's not aligning right, that's why we have alignments. And then now it's aligning correct. So now I have that for my stitching. Right, and then I can tweak this to get the sizing that I want. There we go. Okay, so I'm using Nano to create, hello from Russia. Okay, those. Okay. So now I'm gonna say, all right, I like those. Let's turn these into real topology. So I'm gonna come into my inventory and say one to mesh. Okay. And what I have here now is I got a mesh with this. Okay. <clears throat> And I've changed my polygroups again, so let's go back now and say, okay, this, and we don't need the yellow. This needs to be one polygroup there, okay? Then we need in here, we need this, we don't need the yellow. Control in there, and then now I need, in essence, the middle portion, right? This portion in here to be its own polygroup, and it looks like I have put some yellow, so let's get rid of those inner portions. The geometry, delete hidden, okay? So what I have here now is this brush in essence, because what I'm gonna do now is convert this into a brush. So I'm gonna turn it into an insert. I'm gonna say curve mode. So I'm gonna turn on my curve mode. 
I already know in the brush section, I'm going to need to change the mesh, how it's working along the curve. So the curve is how something's being applied. And then in the brush is the actual mesh itself. This is why we call our meshes tools. I'm using the mesh as a tool, right? So then I'm gonna say, let's weld the points and let's add some a lot of curve resolution, okay? What that's gonna allow me to do, people, is when I go now to draw this out, right? This is what I'm getting. That's what I want, right? And then looking at it this way is what I wanna look at it, right? So if I did not weld my points when I draw it out, right? You would get breaking through here. So the welding of the points becomes important for us. And what's also important is there's three poly groups. So you need one, right? Two, three, right? You can only have three poly groups. And what's happening is I've set this brush up so that the one poly group is repeating in the middle and then the ends are actually capped. This is why I did that. I want a closing at the end, right? I want that to be closed at the end there. That's why I, I did this. I don't want to have opening ends at either side, okay? And now let's go back <clears throat> to this. And again, right, I, like I said, we're going to keep you reusing stuff. So I'm going to keep reusing this back portion now over again and again and again and again and again. So let's go ahead and let's, let's copy this. Again, let's duplicate the back. Okay, and then uh, I'll just call this framing. Just keep it simple. And I'm going to do this now. I'm going to switch back to Z Modeler for now, right for a second. And I'm going to make some new poly grouping. Mm, actually, I, yeah, I'm going to go like that. And let's make the middle section. All right. So I got three new poly groups here, right? So again, I'm holding the Alt key and then letting go. And then it paints that poly group. Every time I tap the Alt key, it'll change the poly group. If I want to get back these poly groups, Alt key, press, let go of Shift key, and then boom. Okay, so this is what I want. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to go ahead and divide this up some. Just give me some more topology. And that's probably enough. And now we're going to go back to that brush I just made. And we're not doing anything new here. We're doing the same, same little trick. I'm actually going to have this in the depth sit in a little bit more so I'm gonna push in that embed a little bit more okay I'm gonna go to my stroke again once again popular function frame based upon polygrouping and now when I tap I get this right and now I just got to find the size that I want uh, yeah, something that size right and then now this is what we're getting we're getting this repeated section through here Right, so I'll, I'll split these off again, right? And now if we look at this, see I'm getting these to go along through there, right? That's how I started to do that, okay? It's pretty, it's quite simple, right? Pretty easy. It's not, it's not craziness here, right? It's just giving me this, right? And then this is just shrunk too much. So the framing actually would have been better to use what I'm using for the back mesh because I have topology there, right? So it would have been better probably to use this one, not have any micro poly, so I don't have any of the, when it's divided up, right? It doesn't have the shrinking that's happening as much because the only po only thing I care about, right? Let's go back to Z Mother again, making these new poly groups right here. Like, so that's a new one. And then this needs to be a different poly group there right and then now turn on dynamic and really again I only care about that and this one right oh I didn't change this last one I need might help if I changed this last one down here let's change this this also needs to be a new one there okay and I'm putting the topology I'm giving myself topology so that I know when I frame it I'm framing along something right that is going to be useful for me okay right as far as the smoothness i don't want to be doing it on such low 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 topology and then now we're going here stroke frame it tap and then there you go and then now split these off 
and then there you go. And then now you're just repeating, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? That's all we need to do now, right? So this is the mesh, okay? We got those. So now you have this, right? The mesh back, I'm gonna not actually size this up a little bit now. It needs to be sitting over top of those, right? And then there. So again, now you just do the same thing in the bottom, same thing in the top, because we're low on time, people. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the back portion now, and then we'll be we'll be done, pretty much. Oh, and then this top part up here was easy. This I just did this. I just grabbed the model kit here, and I just grabbed one of the, like that right there is good enough for me, and I just there. There's the top part. And then just sized it where I wanted it. There. Pretty simple. Nothing too complicated there, right? Okay, so now in the back here, honestly, the easiest way to do this, this the one of the simplest way to do this is we're looking, okay? Let's let's move all the stuff we're looking at. So we got the rim. Okay, we've got the back mesh, and now we've got this pattern through here, right? And then there's the logo. So what I want to do is the mesh the back mesh is something that i want to edit or change okay so i'm going to click on this and i'm just going to go ahead and this time i'm just going to duplicate it and i'm going to rename this back mesh subs okay and i'm going to turn on my gizmo so i'm going to solo this out so you guys are seeing what i'm doing and let's not have a micro poly Okay, so let's just have this. Here we can turn. Let's just turn my probably completely off. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm actually going to click the gear and replace it with a cube, because this is actually what I want. Okay, I want this cube, and I'm going to position that there. If I want to something like that. <clears throat> size that up there. Maybe size it up a little bit more there. Okay, and brush the modeler. We're gonna de uncrease there, uncrease there. And let's give it a mirror and welding just so it's a little bit more to it. And this is how I made the hole in the back. It's, this is the fastest way to do it for me, right? Turn on that, there you go. And I have live Booleans turned on, right? And I've turned this into a subtractive over here. So my icons right here, this is a union. So I'm gonna click here and turn it into a subtractive. And then now I have that, right? Okay. And then I reused this mesh, right? To get the arch way that I need through here. Right, so what I mean by that is just reusing this mesh, I can duplicate this mesh, right? <clears throat> duplicate it. Now I have a duplicated version of this. I can say insert, right? Something like this. It's going to be good enough. And let's go poly group, poly loop. Make that different. Make that different. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to apply. And I'm applying people because really what we're playing with is this. It's really just some kind of cube. It's nothing really dense okay so now when i hit the d key that turns on dynamics so we're looking at the smooth version what i want is the smooth version with that amount of topology great so i actually also don't want here we don't i don't want that to be the same polygroup let's make those i only want these two polygroups okay and i'm going to hit apply and then i'm going to delete and it gives me just topology but what it's doing it's giving me the silhouette which then opens up my ability again, once again, with the curve brushes, right? And then having this, going to stroke, once again, polygrouping, right? And then tapping, seeing it's gonna follow. Okay, but what I'm gonna do is one other step. I'm gonna tell ZBrush, let's also, let's add one more thing to this. So let's get back to di the, the dynamic subdivs, right? In here, I'm gonna put another edge loop through here do something like that. And then I'm gonna Q mesh, poly loop, 
Let's do a poly loop in there, right? Okay, and I'm just adding another row. I'm tapping the Alt key to change my poly grouping. Okay, and now I'm gonna add an edge loop through here. It's good. Let's do poly looping here. New poly group there. New poly group there, right? And I don't need this. So now I have this. And once again, frame it, right? If we now have a brush like this selected, right? So you see how low this curve is? That's not gonna work for me. I need something like that, right? So let's get our creasing to match right now. So we don't need this. This is why I'm saying you need to get some divisions, right? I need some, okay, divisions through here. Okay, so I'm gonna now just crease. Let's crease by polygroups to make it faster. So now we get something like that. And let's go ahead and crease this here. So we're gonna crease, I'm gonna do a partial this time. Because I only want the bottom. Boom there, okay. Because this is more or less what I want. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. Delete the lower, right? And then now all I care about is this portion. Okay, and then we can get rid of all this if we want to. I don't really need that topology. And I didn't have symmetry on and that, right? So this now becomes, gives me the topology for the back to frame and then do that, right? And then that's too big. Let's go a lot smaller. Something like that, right? And then that, right, is making up this. So now I can just put it in place wherever I want. All right, so that's how I kind of got that pattern. I reuse the shape. Okay? So there you go, that's how I got that, right? I'm just using that shape again to give me there, and then now I just position this where I want it to be positioned. That's it, that's, it's, it's that simple, right? Obviously, when I was doing this, I was going a lot faster um, because I wasn't sitting here and explaining everything, of course, right? <clears throat> and let's go along here and then now you guys can do stuff like this or I can let's also be symmetrical so I can move this around do a lot of different stuff with this there you go okay that's how I started to manipulate and give that in the back Okay, and there you have it. There's making that hat. Okay, so our final result that I got to was more like this. Okay? And then this this stuff back here is super easy. Just, again, reuse the topology. Right? So coming back to here, we've already got topology that supports the brimming of the hat. Right? Which is the back mesh part. Right? This is already supporting it. So we've already got... A copy of that right here right so all I did is said okay whoops I want the topology let's get rid of the curve I'm just gonna reuse this blue topology right here right to create the snaps okay so then I don't need any of this I just need that right and then split it or in this case I can just delete it I don't need any of this so I'm gonna delete hidden and then now I just did, okay, I don't want one row of topology, right? So I'm going to come in here and go to delete and poly loop and delete that, right? Turn on dynamic. And again, let's add now some thickness to this. Like this, I'm going to turn off post subdivs. And then this is what I got. I'm going to add another couple segments in there, there. There, that's it. Like it's not, it's not difficult, right? That's it. That's all you need to do. And then if you want a little bit more shape in here, right? This is just you now just quickly, right? Coming in here and then just, if you want this to be more round, just 
do this and then see you can there it's more round done and then now of course you put one over top of the other okay so that's kind of how I started doing that back portion there as well okay if that makes sense so that's how I got let's go back to this one that's how I got that part right in there and there you have it and then of course you can see the front remember I said I wanted to keep the front part okay the front was easy to do to make that look a little bit more like cloth okay I grabbed the, that front piece again right remember I said I'm gonna want to reuse that front piece specifically like see something like this right or uh, here's the front original one all I need to do now is turn this on right to what I want it to turn into right so I'm going to head let's crease it dynamic sub -diffs. let's turn on micro poly I'm gonna turn this weave in here pattern I'm actually going to let's move this now up All right let's turn this on so this is the one that I'm on and then this is going to be the very front of my hat now now it's just getting something like that and then And then now I probably need some more and some more. Right. And then this in essence is now going to become right. Instead of having this, instead of having this, right. This portion in here, right. This is what's going to happen that. Does that make sense? Okay, hopefully that makes sense for everybody. I can even just keep this and all I would need to do is just push this back a little bit more. Something like that. There. There you go. So we got a mesh in the front. We've got our stitching. We've got now a pattern that looks kind of more like a hat in there, right? So, and then I've got a logo with, and now you're just coloring it off. All right, so what was the question again? Someone remind me what that last question was. That somebody said, hey, don't forget about my question. I don't remember what your question was again. Remind me what your question was again. Mr. Sanson, you could use that for surface noise too, though. Uh, what was the question? Someone was asking a question again. Can someone reiterate again what that question was? So this is, oh, this is my, my kind of final piece again there's probably more I would do to this then I would start hitting it with some of the cloth brushes to make this actually look like you know it's a little bit more not so perfect especially this portion of a hat right like if you look this one's actually pretty perfect right it's not crazy there's a little dipping in here right it's not too nuts this is staying keeping its form pretty much in the front right but okay there you go so micro polys are very powerful in fact i found a great way to use them with surface noise okay well uh, alex i already have the low polygon version that changes into a game asset right so i built it from a low polygon version so all i would need to do is bring it into your program all this would be one mesh right and then you can either just put it all on a normal map because you'll have the arbitrary low polygon version because that's where I started. And then this version with all the details in it, right? Or you you can take this and then just make a lower polygon version by, like I would probably decimate it in ZBrush. Yes, this will be saved. Um, hold on, I got to see... Let me see where your, your other question is. Unfortunately, I don't have really much time left because there's another streamer coming up after me. Um, hold on, I'm going up where your question was. Hold 
I gotta find, there's a lot of chat. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. Uh, give me a second. See you community. Wait. Wait, you have several stocking missions of that. Wait, and you're having like a multi-part. Okay, one question. Can I make a back stocking part? How does one use for games like how adapt it? Does something need to be done forehand in ZBrush? I'm not actually understanding your question. Are you? What do you mean by stocking back part? I don't know what you're asking. Okay, so make believe found one that you're also asking. Can flower designs or some kind of interactive design be added with the stocking mesh? Yeah, any chance you'll get more cartoon? Um, hired gun. I don't know. I'll have to see if, if we have any more of the of the swell bottles. I'll have to ask. So. Um, Ibrahim, you're asking, can flower designs or some kind of interactive design be added with the stocking mesh? Are you referring to the back? Because anything can be done there. It's whatever you want. It's anything you want. Yeah, you can add flowers either with nano mesh, you can add flowers with insert mesh brushes. Again, unfortunately, I don't really have time to break down how to turn it into a game ready mesh because I got to get going because, again, there's streamers coming up. Um, but it wouldn't be that difficult to turn this into a game ready mesh. This, the reason why I'm using micro polys is it's geometry. So it's ready to go, right, for, for the geometry. So depending on also what game engine I'm trying to get into or what, even what company I work for. It's also going to depend upon where I maybe even go with this. How many triangles do I even get to turn this into a game ready mesh? Okay, unfortunately, I just don't have time to walk you guys through all that. Um, but mostly for me, if I was turning this into a game ready mesh, I would have the whole main part of the hat. In essence, what we started with very beginning, right? The very, very, very beginning of this, the hat, right? I'm now, now I'm in, I'm in my finished version. So this portion of the hat, right? where it even had still the back part, <clears throat> that would probably be the mesh I would start with being my game ready mesh, okay? And then all I'm going to do now is use normal maps to give the pattern that I did here and the logo, right? And the stitching, all the stitching would be in a normal map, all the pattern would be in a normal map, the logo itself I would put in the normal map itself. The only other thing maybe I wouldn't put in the normal map is the tubing that's going around here. Might just be easier to keep that as real topology. And then the back, right, this mesh part, that would all be an alpha. So in essence, the only thing that's going to go into my engine, right, is going to be the the, the low, 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 lower version of the back portion, right? Just this, right? This is all it's going to end up being. And then there'll be an alpha from the pattern and then that's it. And then I would use that alpha in my engine to do just like I did in ZBrush, where I'm using pure black and pure white. And then that would give me my pattern. That's that's the route I would start going. And then everything else would be topology. I would just drop into place there too. That's it. So in essence, me personally, I'd probably have one and then two, three, maybe four pieces of geometry for the hat. That's it. And then all the patterns will be driven by normal mapping or in the case in the back, it's going to be used. I'm going to use it to create an alpha channel and save on topology. So I would probably do an alpha tile. In essence, I just, you just take this really, you guys can take, take this that I made and bring that in and tile that. Right. Okay. There you go. Um, yeah, our next streamer, hold on, let me adjust because this is on the way. We got another streamer coming up, right? Right after me. So we are looking at, this was just looking at me seeing about what we could do about that video. You guys asked a lot of questions on how we made the hat. 
So there you go. That's how I did most of the hat, obviously walking through it. Yes, this is now recorded and this will stay up on our YouTube forever. So you guys can rewatch over and over and over again if you really want to. It's there for you. So, um, and coming up next, let me get the calendar. So, because I I've, don't remember who is coming up again after me. No, Paul Deasy's up next. Paul Deasy's up in 25 minutes. Okay. So there you go, All right? There is making the hat from our video inside a ZBrush. And I used a lot of different features, right? To get to this point, okay? But it's a lot of fun to manipulate and try some different experiments, right? And I made the stitchings really big on mine because I knew it was gonna be put in a video that's gonna be going really fast. So obviously you guys probably wouldn't want your stitching that big. Oh, what, it's your, it's your world, it's your world. Okay, and then there you have it. There is how it's made, making the baseball cap that you guys saw in that video, I think last week, okay? Okay, so uh, Fabio, I already showed how to do the stitching, so I'd recommend, because I gotta go, unfortunately, go back and rewatch this video. In the beginning part, we're showing how we did the stitching, okay? That would be my uh, recommendation, because unfortunately, I have to go. So I really appreciate you guys all tuning in. Hopefully you took a lot away from that. So that's how you saw making the hat video for what you see in our, our uh, little Instagramming and social media. Thank you for watching. I'm Paul Gabriel with Pixelogic. This once again was how it's made, making a baseball cap and have a great day. And 